All right, we're doing Vinland Saga Season 2, Episodes 3 and 4. Remember to check out that Patreon link down below for the early access and uncut versions of all reactions on the channel. Please leave a like on this video and let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section. It really does boost the video and the channel. Let's hop right into today's episodes. Let's do it. Omar is plastered drunk. I don't even know how to feel. Half a man. Killing a man? What is it? Yeah. Not a man in the Iron Islands unless you killed someone. I do not want to talk, but I have heard stories from shows and other things where people say, you know, when they, it's the ultimate, it's the greatest feeling, you know, I don't know. That is what Jamie Lannister says on Game of Thrones. Once you realize we're all just meat and flesh and a little bone to keep it together, you know. The song that's playing right now with this is so eerie, though. Ooh. Slaves? Are we really talking about slaves? Like, are we really gonna go after Anar and Thorfinn? First off, just... You're wrong. That's horribly fucked up. First off, Thorfinn, I'm pretty sure, in terms of pure combat ability, could handle anyone in a 1v1 on this... in this farm, you know? All right, so we're at the next morning. Now I'm drastically more nervous about our days and what's going to happen now. Yeah, not only do they have to do their wood clearing thing, they have to do that on top of their already harvesting, planting, farm season. You know, it's crazy. Is he having a nightmare? PTSD? I would be the same as Anar. I'd be like, very worried. I wonder what he was dreaming or thinking about. Oh, is that the master's daughter? Anar is stumbling. That man got that. I was about to say he got the riz, but nah, she's gaming. Shout out Kettle's daughter. His heart is pounding. He's about to have a heart attack. I'm glad to be in Thorfinn's mind again. Like. So far, we're, we haven't been in there that much this season. Arn, Arnhide? Seriously? She reminds me of the slave when we stopped at Askeladd's, uh, not like his home home in Wales, but where, where was it? Where it was like Garm or who else was like in charge? Uh, Gorm, I think. And then... Uh, like a, a, a noble or something lost all his money, so he had to sell his daughter as her personal, as his personal slave. Like, I was so expecting her to be his daughter. She's also a slave. Oh no! Now I'm nervous. Oh no! This makes me nervous. Air quotes, guests. Yeah, should anything happen, they're the fr front line of defense. So we're back at the area, up on the top of the cliff. Here's Omar. They're like, what's the master's son doing here? 
How are they going to... Because if they kill these... How? How do you get out of this without killing the people? These are very important people. Not... Yes, very important people. I'll, at least 10 times more important than you are. You're, we're the bottom of the totem pole. That's all there is to it. Your life, you don't own your own life. That's so crazy to think about. Orphan, no reaction at all. Pure stoicism. Now they're kind of pushing him into doing this. Right? Now they're egging him on. You can tell he doesn't want to. Aner taking the brunt of this. They're not going to let Thorfinn go. That doesn't even look like he had any intention on leaving. What a pain. He's he's so broken. He's so broken of a man. He's willing to literally give up his life. What a pain. He just had enough. Look at that face. Oh my god. Now who is this sleeping in this cabin? This isn't Kettle, is it? Now who is this character? Not immediately recognizing him. Like the design of that sword, though. We're still on Kettle's farm. He's saying Gramps. Like, I could just be an old man. Or this is... That's not Kettle's farm. This could be a completely different farm. Right? Right? So, like, we were not expecting anyone to happily lay down their life. Every once in a while, like, wow, I need to know how this is going to end. They're going to let him. Death. Bodies. Shida. That's the product that warriors sell. Death has... That, that he is right. It would have no value if you didn't fear it. And to prove his resolve, no face, no reaction, no nothing. Oh, so he's... He's a part of the guests, hence the sword, the bodyguards of the farm. He didn't, he missed last night's gathering and everything, so he's late to this. What's he going to feel about them and what's going on? No reaction at all. Death by a thousand blades, a thousand cuts. What the fuck's going on? He literally, right here, didn't even blink. Man, this is getting super deep right now. Is being alive the antithesis of death? You know, not for Thorfinn. Not for Thorfinn. He doesn't live to avoid dying. The way they're visualizing this right now. He welcomes death, honestly. Death is more of a blessing and a, and a happiness to him than anything that's happened to him in his life. Oh my lord, and still no reaction. The tip of his ear is just gone. You can tell he's starting to push this guy's buttons. Snake. Fox and Snake. I didn't think these would be like important characters. So that's why. Snake, someone, someone. Is that why they're reacting like this? Boss. 
Oh, so it's like that. He's in charge, charge. He's gonna sock the shit out of him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see at least two, two, two teeth gone. Talk about a development. Snake is him, apparently. Very curious what's gonna... Wait. That was the episode? I swear it just started on everything I love. All right. On to the next episode, episode four. Directly where we left off, Snake is about to stop Fox from continuing this bullshit. He wanted his breakfast. I told him what happened. They're trying to get a free kill for Omar. They're patching up Thorfinn. He literally didn't. He literally was trying to be as cooperative as possible with you guys. Snake. Heavy. That was one of the coolest things I have seen. I want to pause it just immediately because there's a lot to process in that literal millisecond. So the entire time of Snake or a uh, Fox fucking with him, no reaction, no hesitation, nothing. The one move he does from the Snake does that gives him the immediate bodily reaction to Askeladd. And it reminds me of that one move that Askeladd started on Thor's when they're fighting you know, we're under the sail of the ship and it got that immediate slash on Thor's. And so he instinctively went for the kick because it reminded of Ask. Oh my God. Oh my Lord. Was that one of the sickest things? And that was so much visual storytelling right there. They're all like, what the fuck? Your body says it wants to live. No matter what you were saying earlier. That's kind of a crazy point. Damn, now I want to see him fight someone seriously. We got our next Askeladd Thor Kel Thor's level fighter. Got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And now Thorfinn has a lot to think about. I was literally just about to say, for what? What do you want to live for? We found out that we do want to live, but why? And do what? What's our next step? We don't have Askeladd to avenge Thors anymore. What do we do, you know? All right. Starting off with a dung beetle. That ear injury is crazy. This is Pacha, right? It was seeming like it had Snake not gotten there, yeah. Like sometimes it's all fun and games and jokes, but yeah. Ooh, is that why they showed the dung beetle off rip? I'm telling you, bro, the writing and storytelling in this season is gonna I'm gonna need to rewatch it like four times. The harsh reality of this world. Orphan's been experienced that and been a part of that for his entire life. So there's no way he's ever going to disagree with that. We don't have medicine to pay for that. Medicine is probably expensive as hell during this time. Shout out Potter. He's already my favorite on the farm, besides Kettle. Did she make the medicine? Shout out to her. <laughs> yes, she has our heart sincerely and fully. <laughs> Shout out her. That is a lovely shirt. Orphan was literally wearing a dinner cloth, a rag. Like... I'm praying he's like this actually, but Potter might be the one of the coolest people we've ever seen in, in the show. Right? Say thank you. Arigato. Gozaimasu. Come on. I love how they show the animal kingdom mother, parent, or 
uh, parental thing going on right now, because this is what's happening right now. Whether it's big brother, little brother, whether it's father, son, you know, you always need a little bit of mentor discipline. Just like that, we're right back to our overall long-term goal, chopping down this part of the woods. Yep. He's no ordinary man, to say the least. I was like, think, I was trying to think how many people he's killed. So many. More than he can count. Ooh. Five or six. I love the visualization of the forest and him coming up, you know, with the two daggers, the famous daggers. Five or six, man. That's even crazier than I thought. The beasts you were talking about wearing human skin a couple episodes ago. Thorfinn's one of them. The Danes who came and killed your family, you know. He technically was one. Not technically was one of the specific ones. You guys know what I'm trying to say. I'm telling you. The complex depth and writing in the show is going to get me. Love the visualization of us sleeping opposite, literally split, facing opposite directions. What is going on in Aner's mind right now? The fires sparked? Is that a visual fire inside Aner's heart? Or is that like a real... Oh... He's visualizing the fires that were brought to his village, his home, his dad, his family. That was a crazy cut. As he's hearing Thorfinn's words, he's thinking of the men who did the horrible things to the people he loves. And with the face is animated like that. He thinks of Lada, Mama. That was the face when he was getting dragged away, right? He finally gets his vengeance for that day. He's gonna start squeezing. He's squeezing. Ooh. With Thorfinn running down the dead forest. Bro, when I tell you the visualizations in this show are fucking something else. We're all fighting our our demons. <laughs> no bullshit, literally. The visual storytelling. As fucking Anar is choking him to death. So is this the dream he's dreaming about when he starts screaming? That was like almost, I swear, like an exact shot from season one. I swear, when he cuts off the like the French guy's head, the captain, he thinks of the fucking mom who took him in and saved his life during that one part. Yeah, that's what the dream he thinks about. Bro. Knowing he's specifically thinking about the mom who already lost her son and, and his ain't her stopping him, helping him right now. At least wake up from this horrible dream. What is this show? What am I watching? The things he's done and the people we've killed can never be brought back or changed. I'm no different from the people who, who took the ones you love most away. But, Aner didn't kill him. Helped him and woke him up when he was crying out. but still hates him. Do you regret what you've done? Yeah, it's crazy to think, because like, I'm trying to it's process this, you know, and, and from Aner's perspective, one of the reasons I assume he's so conflicted is because, especially he's had a couple of days, maybe even a couple of weeks, to live with Thorfinn before finding this information out. Now... He knows he's a broken-willed, broken... He hates his life, essentially. Thorfinn does. So, the fact that 
one of the people who've caused Aner, not directly, but one of the people he groups up with, Thorfinn with, who've caused Aner so much harm and hurt in his life, is having a worse life than him, is a struggle to process, you know? Like, not a single good thing has happened to me in my entire life. And, like, crazy to think about. It gives me AOT vibes when you realize the people on the other side are also just as shitty and not well off as you, you know? He thinks back to his mom, Lada, live for that reason, you know? Man, I told you, this is so deep. I kind of agree with Aner right now, you know? Like... In terms of having a perspective shift, you know? Crazy to think about. It's crazy to think about. So, that's very mature of him to say that. To not demonize him and throw him in the entire group who's done the horrible act to your family, you know? That was very mature of Aner. And he said arigato like he wouldn't say it earlier to potter he took aner's advice yeah. i'm hoping that from this or at least this can be the roots of that the foundation i'm hoping this can be a relationship that i look back on and am super happy that this happened you know or that they met Trying to think of another relationship that started as rocky as these two, but then developed into one of my favorites and I struggle. I'm struggling even thinking about anything right now. Who is this? With the cross headband on. The blonde hair, blue eyes. Bro, these episodes go by faster than I can fucking blink. I swear. Oh my god. When I say this show, story, piece of fiction is going to get deep, like. Wow, it is taking me away with how deep this is and the levels that they're willing to go. I cannot wait to see more. I cannot wait for more to develop, uh, especially with the introduction of the character Snake and how everything went down with uh, Fox, Badger, and all that, Omar. I I really like Potter. I really like Arnhide. How, how do you say your name? Ar Arnade? Arnide? Arn I don't know. I've never heard of a name like that. Very interesting. But really in liking her. I'm hoping... I. I don't tend to ship characters and shows too much. You know, I'm not a big shipper like a lot of the other people are. But her and Anar, I would love for them to have 74 kids together and grow up and die of old age and just be happy and well off, you know? Same thing with Thorfinn. Thorfinn, have yourself a nice little wife. Get your, oh my god, those are dreams at this point. If they don't die horribly tragic deaths, we're already up. So we're in a pipe dream right now. Like I said, though. Loving these episodes, loving the writing of this. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this as well. If you are, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post on the Dapper channel. Check out that Patreon, early access, uncuts, all that jazz. Have a great day, y'all. Peace out.